Hey guys, we're back here with Jake. Uh, we're filming again from Endless Gaming, and uh, we're going to now start talking about the kill vectors for Menoth and how they would handle Signar. Again, this is all strategies revolving around battle boxes to kind of get people in the uh, War Machine mindset. And as Jake brought up earlier, these assassination attempts, especially when you're talking about battle boxes, really are introduced towards the conclusion of turn two. Yes, when when you're playing this game, the big thing you got to do is you got to kill the caster. I don't mean to pull a John Madden, but that's how you win. You kill the caster. <laughs> <laughs> you know, usually it's the team with the most points that wins at the end of the game. <laughs> Okay, so what you see right here is the conclusion of turn two. Signar's already moved. Striker has cast Snipe on the Charger. The Charger. And Ar Arcane Shield on the big guy. And then on the Lancer, left alone. And then Striker's back there sitting on two focus for protection. So we start this off. I'm on the previous turn, Krios cast Defender's Ward on this guy so that he stands a little bit better than he is and it's kind of like a bulwark against everything. So what he's going to do is he's going to put one on him because he wants him to run. And you're going to be kind of throwing away this jack but setting up this jack to trade pieces to take out the heavy. Because with Defender's Ward on this big guy you'll be able to, you'll be able to stand against anything that you have against there if you take out that heavy. So that's our main goal. With Menoth, you don't play as much of an, an assassination as you do an attrition, relying on fire and model loss to kill the opponent. So the first, so we gave one to him, we're going to give one more to this guy, and we're going to give one more to that guy. So he's left with four. I'm going to upkeep that spell, so he's now left with three. So the first thing that's going to happen is this guy. He's going to spend that to run. He's speed 5, so he runs 10. So he's going to run right back into the face of things. Making sure to keep these two guys in his front arc. Because of his shield, if this guy tries to move in, he gets bashed away, repulsed. And then the next thing that's up, Krios. Krios wants to check his control area. That guy's out. So what he's going to do is he's going to move, move his 5 up. And he's going to start spending some focus. The first one is he's going to spend two to cast Immolation, boosting to hit, arcing through him on a striker. Striker's a defense of, of 16, but he's a focus of 7, so I'm going to need a 9. I hit, but just barely. So now we try to just harass him a little bit. It's a POW 12, he's got two focus on him, so this is dice minus five. One damage. Nickel and dime. Nickel and dime. So next up is this guy. This guy wants to run. He runs eight, but the main thing that he wants to do is he wants to get in the way. He wants to try to get in front of him. Next is this guy. This guy's going to move up his five, and he's going to spray the striker. Eight inch range, and he's going to boost a hit. So, the Repenter is a rat of five, so I'm going to need an 11. That got it. He's now on fire. So fire, at the beginning of his turn, he takes a POW 12 that can't be negated. So he's going to get that. He's going to, it's going to be dice minus three on every roll. On a roll of a one or two, it'll expire. But let's see what happens. So this is a... First roll, so dice minus five, no damage. That's fine. And then he's going to take his turn. The suggested thing that he would probably do is probably move this piece to try to shoot Krios. And he very well may kill him, but Krios has a lot of health. He's got 18 health, and he's got decent, uh, decent stats to defend against the Charger. So he'll probably live through that. This guy would probably move up to try to kill him and then get pushed back. Striker kind of on his heels, would leave a lot of his focus after giving three to him and upkeeping Snipe and Arcane Shield, would stay, would stay there and pop his feet to try to take some hits. Let's see how much damage he took from that fire. 
So he just took another another four damage. So he's he's down to a grand total of twelve. This guy, move up, try to pick poke at that guy. He can do what he can. On the next turn, the big change would be. So I'm gonna upkeep Defender's Ward. I'm gonna I'm gonna give him three focus. And then I've got three more to play with. I'm gonna give him three. So he's gonna move up and he's gonna pop his feet. Having so everything in his control area that's enemy is now knocked down. It kind of sets the stage for things. Because uh Striker's gonna be at armor 21 right now. But he's on fire, and we want to see if that fire can kill him at the beginning of his turn. So we just want to see if we can do a little bit more damage. So the first thing that's up is this guy is going to move around and just poke him. He's got three focus, so a jack with three focus can do some damage. So he automatically hits, and we boost the damage. The Revenger is a POW 13, so this is going to be dice minus eight. But that's a lot of damage. That's seven more damage right there. So he's pretty hurting. So we're gonna we're gonna buy another attack and we're gonna boost the damage. It's automatically hit because he's knocked down. And that roll will kill him. Yeah, let's, let's play that off with moderate rolls. Okay. So the first thing we do, move him up, and we poke him. Because he's knocked down, he's automatically hit by this next attack. So he boosts the damage. The Revenger's Halberd is a POW 13. So against an armor 21, this is dice minus 8. So that right there, which is a pretty average roll, that's 4 damage. So he'll be down to 8. So we'll buy another attack, and we'll boost damage. I'm not going to even bother hitting him with the shield because I don't want to push him away. So that right there, dice minus 8. No damage. Well, let's see if the let's see what else we can do. This guy is gonna is gonna move up to be sort of melee range with him, just in case if this guy wants to stand up, I'll get a free strike against him, and then he'll flamethrower him. So a not snake eyes to hit, that'll hit, and then dice minus a lot, and that's still no damage, but he's still on fire. So just in case if it went out, it'll still it'll still remain. So next up is this guy. What we want to do is we want to take out this charger that's threatening us. So we move up. We, ch uh, we don't even need to charge. We just move up. And then we beat on him. He's automatically hit. And the charger's armor is a 16 against my POW of an 18. So it would be dice minus 2 for 1, 2, 3, 4 of his mace attacks. So if, on average rolls, he should be out first roll, so that'd be 9 damage. The second one, that'd be 8 damage, so a total of 17. Third one, that'd be an 11, so a total of 28. And that's, he's out. That's that jack. One focus left to spare. So then, on Striker's turn, he's going to see if he's, he's going to check for fire again. He's still on fire. So this, so if if this result is an 11, he's dead. Nope, it's not, so he takes five more damage. So with, so he's down considerably. He's only got a good one hit left in him. Or if he survives till the next turn, the fire may kill him as well. And that's the primary goal of, of the Menoth army, is harassment. You want to harass your enemy army. And then he'll get his focus back. The main thing he wants to do is get this jack up to kill that jack. So he's going to allocate this jack three, and then get him to stand up, to shake the knockdown. He's going to give this jack one, so he can shake the knockdown, and turn to face on his turn. So then Striker will hold on to two. Everything will fade. So the first thing that happens is this big guy will turn. Smash that guy. He's going to need to move around him a little bit to make sure that repulsion, well, repulsion will hurt no matter what. First with the hammer. That'll hit. Boost the damage. This would be dice minus one. 
See if we crush the shield. Nope. That'll take a significant punch out of him, though. And then he'd be pushed back. But that's one thing that we set up for. We wanted him to be there and then repulse back. So that next turn, this guy can close in on a back arc on him. Striker himself is in a pickle. There's really nothing else that Signar can do in this game. Not after losing the charger. So this guy would try to move around, try to do a few bits of damage on him, probably not really do anything, and Stryker himself would keep that focus to try to live through the next turn, because he's not spending focus to kill that, because all that would happen would this guy would move out from him and then just blast him. So on this turn, last thing we do is we try to is we just end the game through attrition with this jab. So three on. He's got his first attack, boost to hit. He needs a 10. Got it. We'll go ahead, we'll save these two to boost for damage. Uh, to boost, uh, to buy another attack and to boost to hit later. So this would just be, especially since Striker's at low health, Striker only has 5 health left. So I roll the 7, so that's 13, and he's a 17 right now, so that's minus 4, that's 4, that's 3 more points. He's down even more. Buy another attack, we'll boost the hit. That'll hit. And then we have dice minus four. It's no damage, but we'll see what's up. Get with the shield, so we have ten, no damage to the shield. This jack would move up. He'd take a free strike from him to hit. He'd do considerable damage. So to call him six though. So that would spread it out, taking out his gun from hitting the six on, and not his war flail. So then, on striker, nope, still missed. This guy is going to charge. Take out that jack. There's no doubt in my mind that this guy will take out him. So we'll do it with the first hit. So that was one to charge. He's got two left. Charge. That'll hit. This is straight dice. That's 14 to 5. That takes out those columns. He's got six, uh, roughly 16 hitboxes left. So the open fist, that'll hit. Crusader's open fist is a 14, so that's minus 4. That's 4 points to 1. So we, and when we buy another attack, that'll hit. Let's go ahead and boost the damage. Get it over with. And he's out. That jack. The ironclad is no more. Mission accomplished. We've swarmed Striker, got caught him on fire, and Krios is out in the open. But maybe he'll get charged by him, but he'll probably live through it. If he took any damage previously, that'd be a different story. But right now, Striker may die just from this dice roll. Alright. He's still on fire at the three. And he'd be dead. So then the key for Menoth seems to be get the warcast, the opponent warcaster on fire as soon as possible. Yeah, for Menoth, your, your main goal is to both get the opponent's warcaster on fire and get your jacks, which are in melee a lot stronger than your opponent's jacks, and kind of swamp them in there. Make sure that you don't lose your heavy, and then if, and try to see if, if he can lose his. This is kind of a one-sided battle due to the fact that Krios was able to take out that charger. Krios has taken some damage from that charger, but being able to take it out meant that he lives. If the fire didn't kill, then this Lancer might have been able to finish the job. Now, realizing that this is a Menoth strategy, would the same type of rules apply if they were going up against Kador? The same exact <laughs> rules would apply if they were going up against Kador. The big thing about Kador, though, is since they have two heavies that can take out anything, you're going to want to try to go for Sorsha herself. And with her high defense, uh, Krios's feet knocking her down will mean that she does not have an advantage. That that turn would kill her, would end her. So we might actually come back in uh, in a later video, show you guys uh, Menoth versus Kador. We also might be uh, jumping into hordes as well. Thanks, guys.